Welcome to Rams Iconic. I'm your host, DeMarco Farr, and this is the podcast where you get to catch up with some of the greatest players in Rams history. I love my job. It's a chance for you to take a trip down memory lane or let me trip you down memory lane and reminisce about some of the greatest moments you've had as Rams fans. But it's also an opportunity uh, to introduce to some of you, the newer fans, the iconic players that made this franchise what it is right now. My next guest played four of his 16 years in the NFL for the St. Louis Rams, undrafted out of Division Three John Carroll in 1998. A four-time Pro Bowler, should be a lot more. You'll hear about that soon. Uh, finished his career with 2,039 career tackles. That's 2,039 car wrecks. That ranks second all-time in NFL history, only behind the one and only Ray Lewis. Uh, he is just one of six players in the history of the NFL to start 250 consecutive games. And he was a member of our world champion, uh, St. Louis Rams team in 1999. Please welcome in the venerable one, London Fletcher. I know you played with you. We're going to get into that for a hot, but the thing that comes out is you were an alternate 11 times before you actually made the Pro Bowl. And that's the jersey from from when you finally made it? Yes. I mean, when you see that jersey, what... What feelings come out for you? Well, it's um, a couple different feelings. One of them, um, obviously, great pride because I accomplished that. and But also um, just a uh, disappointment, too, because it took me so long to, to finally get that rest recognition that I knew I deserved, um, you know, early in my career. Even during my days with the Rams, um, you know, uh, our Super Bowl year, I barely, I, I, you know, I, I deserve to make the Pro Bowl that year. I can remember Coach Coach Vermeil. I know I know you remember that meeting when he uh, announced all the Pro Bowlers who made the team. You were one of the guys. Yeah, uh, Kevin Carter. Um, you know all the uh, offensive guys. Uh, Kurt Isaac. Um, you know Marshall Orlando. All those guys. <clears throat> and um, he also announced the the alternates. And he uh, he mentions my name. And he comes up and he's like, "Congratulations!" And uh, you know he's whispering this in my ear. And I say. Hell, I deserve to make that team. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, I mean, you know me, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's like I was, I was extremely disappointed because knowing what our defense did that year and our offense, they get they garnered the headlines, but we were a dominant group defensively, and I was a, a major part of that defense. And you know, for me to not get that recognition, um, and then I saw the guys who who got uh, voted over me. I think. You know, one guy who was voted ahead of me or as an alternate, um, I think I was second alternate, the first alternate, had missed like half the season. I'm like, wow. come on, are you serious? So, yeah, you know, it's uh, it definitely was frustrating, but I was happy that I finally was able to make it. Um, but definitely, you know, when I see just four Pro Bowls next to my name, I'm like, this is ridiculous. You know, I totally feel you. And I remember that meeting. And before you came to the Rams, I was going through what you were going through. Like, man, I know I'm better than this or I deserve yes. some recognition. And it really drives you. It hurts you. Everything you think uh, about not making the Pro Bowl when you think you should, you're right. But I do struggle with this. And I'll ask you, did you need that recognition? I'm not sure if I did, because when it finally happened, it was good. But I mean, I don't I don't know if I really needed that recognition. I, when I when you say need, it's like it wasn't going to. I was going to play my game regardless. I was going to do the same things I did on the football game, f- football field, regardless. And the way I went about my my business in the meeting rooms, in the locker room, I was going to still do all those things. But I appreciated that recognition mm-hmm. you know, to know because you know, you watch the film. You like you mentioned early where. Uh, you said you you knew you were um you should have been making Pro Bowls because you watch the film you see the guys who are who are playing who are getting voted in and it's like man I'm I'm doing better than these guys or as good right. as these guys and for whatever reason I'm not getting that recognition so you feel a certain way about it um and so I, I won't say I needed it but I appreciated it no doubt uh, taking the field the first time in Hawaii was 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 awesome and, and being in that huddle was awesome and seeing all those dudes that, like you said, we saw on film. And finally, I get to be here so I can say, yeah, me too. You know what I mean? (laughs) You you know what what actually upset me the most? And you uh, you can appreciate this because you were a Nike guy. When you get over to uh, Hawaii and they had a Nike suite, 
Uh, I think they had, and they give you all those those swags. I'm, I'm the the big uh, duffel bags full of yeah. this swag and shoes and all that stuff as one of their pro bowlers. And you know, um, I was my first year I made it. I was with Reebok, um, and they just loaded me up, man. You got to ship all your stuff back because you can't <laughs> you can't take back all this uh this this product that they give you. I mean, it's right. you know it's just so much stuff, and uh, I was more upset about that. Like, man. I, I should have, you know, about 30 duffel bags full of stuff because wow. of all the years that I, uh, you know, wow. should have been voted. But wow. that was that was pretty cool. And then they, you know, they set it out for you. Your kids are able to come up to the suite. Yeah. Your know, wife. And, you know, so that part of it, I, I was more upset about that. I, you know, I had more fun at the pool than I did at the game. Oh, Just yeah. Just hanging around. You know what I mean? Telling stories. But, yeah. Absolutely. But Luther, I was in the Pro Bowl. I was hot. We'll delete that part. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's 20, uh, 21. You're all good. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. Um, the, the re- see, so something else that, that binds us besides uh, Three the Hard Way, me, you, and Ray Agnew. Um, when I read your bio, something else jumps out. Undrafted. I'm still not over it. I'm still mad. I still I still look at the numbers today of the dudes that were ahead of me just to make sure I'm right. Yeah. How do you feel about being undrafted? How much did that drive you? It drove me, I would say, you know, early in my career, just because I knew I knew I was I had a couple of different um, knocks against me. You know, you and I both undersized for our positions, um, you know, quote unquote undersized. Um, you being what, six one, six feet. Yeah. Uh, defensive tackle, me, you know, um, six one all ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, you it was it was something that I I used as a um, motivation and chip on my shoulder for for my first several years. But then after you get into the league for you know three, four, five years, you kind of like all right, I um you know kind of put that to the side and, and figure out other things to to motivate me, but. I always found something to piss me off, man. You know, I, I was yeah. a walking angry, man. <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, you were the guy that got me into DMX. God rest his soul. <laughs> you did. Hey. I didn't know about it. But I didn't hear about it until you started playing. I'm like, let me get into this a little bit. Man, yeah. I, I, was telling, I was telling some guys, uh, I'm a golfer now, so I was on the uh, golf course the other day. Yeah. And, you know, you play music on a golf course, and I had my DMX going. <laughs> I, said, I used to listen to DMX before every game. Yeah. You know, I was in uh in St. Louis. Uh, but just getting back to, you know, you yeah. being undrafted, I played at a small school, Division three school, and then I was undersized. John but Carol. you you yeah. played at Washington, you know, yeah. Pac-12, Pac Pac-10. Um, I can't remember exactly what Pac-10. it was. Pac-10. Yeah. Pac-10. Um, I'm sure you put up great numbers at that oh, uh, yeah. during your uh, college career, but some people just couldn't get over the fact that, man, he's 6'1". And, yeah. and, you know, don't just ignore the productivity I, you're doing this against elite players, guys who are getting drafted, and you're doing this and dominating those guys that got drafted. You know, it was funny, London. Um, I see scouts, and I, I get more love. You know, you, you get more from you get love from players you played against and played with, definitely. And then you see coaches that were with you or coached against you, and they give you love. But I get a lot of love from scouts, and I get the feeling. It was kind of like, how dare you be better than what I thought you were? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They, they would always make it a point to say, well, I had you down at this grade. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. how dare you be better than what we thought this 6'1", 280-pound defensive tackle could be? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, do you, did, did you get that same feeling? You know, it's, uh, it's funny when, when, I, when I run into scouts and they be like, man, I missed on you. Great, great example. This is this is crazy. So, Bill Polian, Hall of Fame general manager, um, you know, doing his uh, career at uh, Buffalo, yeah, Colts, uh, Carolina Panthers. Smart his man. sons actually, yeah, his sons actually went to John Carroll, and one of his sons, Brian Polian, his senior year, Brian was my um, my backup at, at my position, my junior year, and uh, Bill. He came to every game. And so he saw me uh, my junior year, and I was I was All-American that year all over the football field. And then, um, you know, senior year had an even uh, better year. Uh, then he didn't draft me, but we went to – I don't know if you remember, we went to Indy, and we used to scrimmage the Colts up in uh, Indiana. And so uh, Bill Polian tried to uh, – he asked uh, Charlie Army if, uh, if he was going to uh, – if they were going to cut me. Because if they were, they wanted uh, – 
they wanted me. And so, <laughs> and so then uh, Charlie's like, nah, we're not going to cut him. He's just like, well, will you, will you trade him to us? And so Charlie's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. No. But, but the situation is here, you know, you got this Hall of Fame GM who had, who knew me before anybody knew me. I uh, mean, yeah. and, and he saw what I was doing. I mean, I wrecked shop D on that, on that football field. Yeah, and yeah. his scouts, I don't know what they graded me or whatever the case may be, but they didn't draft me. So it was just, it's just yeah. like funny how things work out. It's just, I mean, <laughs> You can play or you can't like Aaron Donald. Great example. Right. Yeah. I mean, he, he's undersized, but the dude can play. So some dudes, they just they let the, the height, weight, speed and the charts, you know, over override what their eyes see. Is the dude making play or not? Yeah, that, that heart. You can't you can't measure a man's heart? No doubt. Uh, determination that that something inside of you. That's when you and, and I don't know, you know, if you 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 really if you're a scout, that's why I think when you get down and you really talk to somebody. And if they talk, talk to you when you're coming out, I'm your passion for playing a game. I'm sure it would have, it would have came out yeah. in the interview process. And you look at that and say, you know what, this guy's desire to be great will overcome all that other stuff. No doubt. Absolutely. Uh, I remember Tony Dungy telling a story about work done uh, his first meeting. He asked work done. Hey, what's, what do you think? What's the best thing you do on a football field? He said, Score touchdowns. Tony <laughs> leaned back and said, draft him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. That's all you need to know. Um, 2,000 tackles, London. You've never missed. You never missed a game in 16 years. 2,000 tackles, never missed a game in 16 years, and we're having a coherent conversation. How, how, how did you do this? Where did this come from? You and Alan Page, are you from a different <laughs> planet? Where did this come from? Man, I you know just um, just a love for the game. I missed a game in in high school because of an injury. I had a um, an ankle injury that you know was a high ankle sprain. I guess not knowing it now, and I wasn't able to play that um, that next weekend. And so I'm sitting on the sideline, and I was miserable because yeah. you know, I see my teammates out there, and they they're having fun, and I'm missing out on that fun. And I, I just I from that point on, I was like, I'm never missing another game. If not for injury, if I can, if I can get, if I can walk, I'm playing in the game, and that was my mentality. Um, you know, God given a you know blessing, and how the way He uh, kind of made me durable. You know, yeah. this thick lower body, big butt, and all those things um, came in place because I've had um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had some 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 things where I may have hyper extended a knee where other guys may have you know, blown their knee out yeah. because, you know, um, just the way God made me, but also the way I uh, took care of my body and just learned from guys like yourself, Mike Jones, Todd Collins, all those guys. You didn't learn from me. You learned what not to do for me. Well, just um, <laughs> yeah. even like, even like the hide in the cold tub early, you know, yeah. just, I used to watch you guys. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't getting in a hot tub or cold tub um, prior to coming to, um, to the Rams and just watching you guys, how you, how you took care of yourselves, getting massages. Um, Ty Collins was the guy who convinced me to get massages. Like, Lenny, you got to get massages. It's like, all right. <laughs> so, uh, right, right. You know, just, just those types of things and really a desire to be out there on that football field with my teammates and for my teammates and, um, and taking care of my body and then God's grace and uh, mercy. I got a few great memories. Um, one is a play. One uh, is when I first saw you. When it was that – uh, into 97 going into 98, right? So second year of her meal, right? So new people are coming through the building and y you ask people, who are you? What position do you play? And I remember you said middle linebacker and we're Mike, we went, we went from Eric Hill or no, Robert Jones to yeah. Eric Hill. And right. we're still trying to find that guy. So we're like, okay, well he, he won't be here long. That first <laughs> practice who did you grab by the face mask and just start beating up? Was it Grudador in you? I think it might have been our starting center. No, nah, it was uh, it was the guard. It was uh, no pads on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it was one of the guards. It wasn't Grudador. It was uh, it was Grud. Okay, it was one of the guards. Man, he tried. He tried me. You, you, yes. Marco, yeah. You you remember? Um, we had they had me in sixty six. Yes. My surgery number was sixty six. <laughs> So this guy was looking at me like, oh, man, this guy wearing number 66. He's, you know, a short linebacker. I'm and gonna, that's fair. You can make I'm going to take advantage of him. And it was a running play. And 
play was over and uh, or the, the play had been made and he's trying to drive block me, you know, down the field. So, man, nah, this you, you, you've you met the wrong guy. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so it, it was all. And, and so uh, when, and I don't know if you remember when we were fighting, then I see all these uh, linemen just running from towards me. Yeah. And where I'm from, if you run it to the, you running at me, you want to fight too. Right. So I just start swinging on everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember yeah. that. Uh, that's the first day we took note. Uh, and then of course you became the starter. And it's funny. Uh, I just did one of these with Kurt Warner. Uh, you and him got your first start in that 49er game the year before we won the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. 98. Yes. Yeah. That, that yep. was your first start. So you became the starter. So my third memory of you was that going into the playoffs and that 99 season, I think our practices were the best practices league wide ever. I mean, not a ball hit the ground. We were letter perfect on defense. Uh, attention to detail was high. Special teams was great. But I remember, was it going into the playoffs? You and I were sitting on one of those little carts, I think. And it was just too much loosey goosey going on. Yeah. And I was laughing and you snapped on me like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, lock it in. Do you remember that moment? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> you know, I just um, we had great fun. We, our practices were phenomenal, like you said. But um, you can kind of sense when something is not where it needs to be and guys are just you know, this is not like we need to be. This is not our standard. So, um, I, yeah, I remember that. I snapped because we were just joking around too much. You know, <laughs> just, yeah, so that, that was that was definitely me. Uh, I, I don't know what it was, but it's just how I was wired. I, I think it was after Carolina, after we had been – I think we, we were already qualified for the playoffs or maybe we were going into a playoff game, but it was one of the moments where we could – where we felt like we could relax a little bit. Yeah, exhale a little bit. And a just, little bit. Yeah. And I'm so yeah. glad that you you got me right in, in that moment because it was right. We need to be focused all the way through every single moment if we're going to get this thing done. And finally, we did. We look at the results on Sunday or game day and, and think that's, you know, when you win the game. The game is won during the week of preparation leading up to, it. you know, your film study, the practice, how you prepare. Um on that football field going into that game. And you know what looks like a great practice. Like you mentioned the ball not touching the ground, um, being on point defensively and all those types of things. And when you when it doesn't look like it's supposed to look, it's my job as a middle linebacker or your job as a veteran guy. You know, you called us out too defensively. Hey, when we weren't um, doing what we need to do, you, you know, you, you snap on us too. So, and that's that's where it's one thing for a coach to hold you accountable. It's another thing when your teammate holds you accountable. And that's when you say, OK, I need to step up my game. You know, uh, Ray Agnew, that's that's our brother. That's our guy. I'm so happy for him. Uh, yeah, I hope he does yeah. well in Detroit. I, I really do. Um, but we had a pact between us that we were going to be the last two D tackles standing. And I'm so glad you brought me back to reality because it's actually three of us, three yeah. the hard way, no tackle, tackle and linebacker against the world. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, just being in the middle, being, I mean, in the thick of things, being in the Super Bowl when they are running the ball at us, you know, time and time again. I mean, it's really, it's like, is this sledgehammer ever going to break? Which one is going to break first? Um, I know I was dead tired and I know we can make jokes about it, but that second half was about as extended as I became as an athlete in my life. I had nothing left. Where were you in that fourth, qu fourth quarter in that, uh, in that Super Bowl? You know, we, I mean, if you think about it, we had um, the way that game uh, kind of transpired in the, um, in the second half, we were on a field of an awfully long time. And I had a, I, a while ago, I actually, had a staff. I think we were out of those the what 30 minutes in the second half. I think we were on the field like 21 minutes. It was something it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um because our offense scored fast, but they also had a, a bunch of three and outs in the second half and things like that. And um, you know, and and Tennessee wasn't they weren't a, a quick strike offense. So it was just methodical, grind you out, grind you out. And I was tired, but if you think back to um our training camp in, you know, my first training camp in 99. I mean, 98, 
training camp in 99 and then even you guys training camp in 97 and, and you all talked about how difficult those training camp that training camp was we were being built for that drive back in 97 98 99 and training camp where we could have easily bro- uh, broken training camp because mm-hmm. that Macomb heat and and you know that that that, that humidity but because we were so tough mentally and physically, we weren't going to let them see us. They weren't going to break our will. Yeah. We'll be here. If we have to go an extra quarter, we will go an extra quarter because we've trained mentally and physically for that. So I was, yes, I was tired, but I wasn't, I wasn't going to uh, let them know it. And we were going to win that game. No doubt. Uh, you know, you didn't have Bruce Matthews hanging all over you. <laughs> <laughs> Benji Olsen, 340 pounds the other side. You know what I mean? Hey, you guys did a great you and you and Ray, you and Ray did a great job of keeping me clean. Ray, Ray Agnew, who played the nose, yeah, he would be upset if if he let a center get up on me. But man, Fletch, my bad, man. Like it really hurt Ray if yeah. he allowed a lineman to get up on me. And I appreciated that. Yes. <laughs> so <Yeah>. I, probably, <laughs> I had a little bit more juice. You know? It's team defense, right? If you can make the play, make we had a rule. If you can make the play, if you're gonna go freelance, you know, you gotta yeah, make, make the play, play. because play. we're sending three guys at you if we make if we miss, and the whole defense yeah. is, is is at risk. But if we hold up two guys, we expect that linebacker to make the play. And I'm telling oh, yeah. you, oh yeah, oh yeah, I, 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 some hell before you became a star. <laughs> you know what? Um, what kills me is when I see um, you know, you'll see guys taking on a double team. And a linebacker just holding back. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times their coaches aren't coaching them to attack to get that double team off that lineman, man. Help them out, you know, and, and free up some one-on-ones and things like that. You'll make more tackles for loss. Get that lineman, give him some help. Um, but you see guys just hovering and and not committing. And when meanwhile yeah. their, their tackles getting pounded. Um I, we also you we had another nickname. Uh, we call it the Bermuda Triangle because yeah. <laughs> you know you were going to disappear in that middle. You can't. <laughs> no doubt. I remember in the Super Bowl, um, they they kept moving us around, and I wound up on the nose. Uh, and they would try to scoop me yeah. with that center, and I just yeah. knew all I had to do was cut him off, right, yeah. and make Eddie George cut back. And I think did you have two tackles for loss on like the same I, run play? Yeah, yeah. I had I had a few tackles for loss. Yeah, because yeah, he was talking trash, like you know, engage, fight me. I'm like, why? London's gonna make the play. Oh nah, yeah, that's like, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. on a different level. Yeah, man. But uh, you're right. Uh, the 97, 98. He eased up in 99. Coach Ramil. Um, Loved him. There were moments where you couldn't stand him, where he turned a stone on you if you, you know, bitched and complained about how hard it was. But, London, you're exactly right, man. He was building us for that last drive. If we didn't have that, we fold probably. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And and we're sitting here Super Bowl champs. But, you know, that's the other thing. Um, you had another shot at it. Uh, in St. Louis. And I asked you this uh, when, when I first asked you to come on. So if it's sensitive, I, I will, I'll stop asking about it. But are you okay now with being an NFC champion? Because that is a remarkable ass achievement. That team was dynamite. And I know you didn't win, but can you look back now and say, we were a great football team? We didn't finish the job. We, we were a great, we were a great football team. No doubt. We won, I think 14 games during the regular season. Yeah. Offense was dynamic. Defensively, we were one of the tops in the league, um, different type of defense than what, uh, what we went, we played in 99. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Tampa too. Um, a lot of younger guys too. Um, didn't have all the same type of veteran experience, but, um, still a dynamic defense. The, um, I haven't, I haven't never watched the, that Super Bowl game. You know, really? I still have memories from some certain plays that happened, but, you know, as I look back at that game and I didn't, I don't feel like we played our best game, um, offensively or defensively, um, you know, special teams wise, all those things. And, you know, you get the conversations about spy gate and all those things and um, what happened, didn't happen. I don't, I don't get too caught up in that because I always like to look inside and say, did we play our best football? Regardless of if spy gate happened, we didn't play our best football defensively, offensively, collectively. And even, um, you know, you mentioned, 
you know, practice and 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 a couple of years ago when you were with us, I mean, the, the Super Bowl yeah. lead, uh, practices leading up to the Super Bowl. I didn't feel like we had our best practices the week of the Super Bowl, you know, from a defense standpoint. And even offensively, we're down in New Orleans. We had beat the Patriots in Foxborough that year. We were a 14-point favorite going into that game. Um, if you look at that Patriots team, you know, yeah, Tom Brady is Tom Brady, What uh, you know, what he ascended to be now. But back then, um, they weren't putting everything on his shoulder and saying go out and beat him, beat us. Um, it was more of a ball control offense. Um, they they run some gadgets and you know make some plays on third down. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was just yeah, it was just a situation um, off uh, defensively. They had some veteran guys, but you know Ty Law was was great and, and, and some great guys in the secondary. But you know when you look at man to man across the board, could they match up with our receivers? You know, no. But they had a great game plan, and I don't think we played our best game. We didn't. We didn't. I didn't feel like our practices were up to the standard of what we are accustomed to um, going into that game. You know, that's funny, man. Um, I talked to Tori and Isaac, and uh, I didn't ask. I'll ask you because we're, we're closer. They're on offense, and they may get mad. Yeah. But the Hall of Fame for you, um, it's it's something that needs to happen, and it, it just – it's all perception, and it drives me nuts. But I wonder – does your Hall of Fame profile increase or chances of getting in increase if you got the second ring? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think everyone, I think Tor and Isaac are already in if they got the second ring. You know what I mean? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, because when you win, I mean, they can't help but say, hey, you know, you're going to you're going to take a bunch of players off off teams that win Super Bowls. And, you know, Isaac is going in this year. Yeah. Um, Tori will, will eventually get in. And if we had won two Super Bowls, he'd already be in. Yeah. And then myself, um, you know, being a star on two Super Bowl teams, I've been, um, you know, overlooked the last few years. I feel like I would have already been in because my numbers are first ballot numbers. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you got 2,000 tackles. What? Yeah, yeah the, the, the numbers are first ballot numbers. Um, the one knock that you can say, well, you know, I only have four Pro Bowls. Well, I just told you what the damn problem is with the Pro Bowl and the way it's voting. There's no way right. I should only have four Pro Bowls. I should have at least a minimum 10 Pro Bowls oh, and multiple you. all pros. And then when you couple in the fact I got one Super Bowl, you throw in another Super Bowl, it's I mean, it's a it's, it's a wrap. It's a you know slam dunk case. But um, you know, we we didn't accomplish it, we didn't finish the job. Um, hats off to them. They 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 played a good football game. Yeah. Um, but I don't I didn't feel like I didn't feel like we played our our best football game. And based on what I had seen, the way we played all season long, those prior previous 18 games and the way we practice. I mean, we just everything when you look at everything holistically. Yeah, that wasn't our best performance as a team. So we do something on this show called my favorite play. Uh, If you can go back and think. What was your favorite play as a Ram? Describe it. Take me to. I know you oh, got man. one. Yeah, man. That's you. Get, so you should have gave a guy a heads up for that. No, no just think about <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, favorite play as a Ram: the Mike Jones tackle um, yeah. in the Super Bowl. That's definitely that has to be the uh, the number one play. Oh yeah, um, I was covering that that play. I was covering Eddie George, and you know I, they they. He ran out to the flat. I'm kind of looking at him, and I'm looking at Steve McNair, yeah. kind of hoping he doesn't tuck it and run. So that's that's going to be number one. Man, I can't. I don't have. Did you bust? Did you bust out? I don't have a favorite play for me. Like a play that I made. Man, I used to. I love hitting people. So <laughs> that says everything about you. It's. I mean, you yeah. remember the bad plays versus the good plays. We had a. <laughs> did we take a kickoff return back in the uh, in the uh, playoff game against Minnesota? Yeah, uh, I think it was the opening kick of the opening second, kick half. second half. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to be up there. Yeah, um, yeah, because I was, I was, I was uh, Tony Horn's lead blocker. Yeah, so be up there, and that that kind of that kind of sparked us. Let's see, well, defensive plan. I can't, I can't think of another. There's got to be one, Demarco. I made a lot of plays. Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I made a oh. lot of plays. All jokes aside, man, I made a whole lot of plays. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Wow, that's funny. You made too many plays to remember. How about Coach Vermeil? I mean, when you came in and that relationship and him and them giving you a chance and getting it right, working us to death, but having a plan and then having it pay off. Uh, to me, uh, I am so glad he became our coach. Uh, during that time. W- without him, we don't do what we did. How do you feel about Coach Vermeil? No, absolutely. You're, uh, abs- you're absolutely right. I-, I love Coach Vermeil. Still keeping contact with them to this day. You look at um, Coach Vermeil and how he built that football team, and he gave underdogs and long shots a true opportunity to make a football team. He didn't care where you were drafted and how you entered the league and all those types of things. If you can play football, and you worked hard and you're a good teammate and you did it the right way. He was going to, he was going to give you a true opportunity to make his football team. And, and if you played well, you were going to be on this team. And um, I'm forever indebted to him because at the time that he entrusted me to be a, his starting middle linebacker, that was uh, his third year as the head coach, you know, had two losing seasons mm-hmm. prior to that. And, you know, we all knew he was on the hot seat. If, if, you know, we didn't win more than likely he was going to get fired, but you know, to say, Hey, I'm going to get the keys to this undrafted free agent, five ten linebacker out of John Carroll university to play the middle linebacker position at the spot that, I mean, it's, it's extremely important on the defense and say, you know, even though my job's on the line, I trust this guy. So, you know, I, my hat, I'll, I'll forever be indebted to Coach Vermeil. Coach Vermeil, when you look at his resume, this is another guy that, you know, the Hall of Fame needs to look at. When you look at what he was able to accomplish in Philadelphia, um, St. Louis, and then also what he was able to accomplish in Kansas City. Yeah. I mean, you couple those, those three places and his full body of work, how could he not be in the Hall of Fame? So it's, 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 a, it's a process that, you know, and a system that needs to um, be remedied. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, figure out a way to make it because there's so many people that are that get overlooked year in and year out. And I know, you know, it's only five, five modern era players and, yeah. you know, um, only a couple coaches that go in every year. But you got to figure out a way to um, to 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 remedy that situation. I feel you. Yeah, man. Um, I, I figure Coach Vermeil will get his due once the Kurt Warner movie comes out. Because once they, <laughs> yeah. once they really figure out what happened and what he did in, in St. Louis to, with that football team, then I'll, I think you'll get his due. But like you said, uh, he believed in you. And here you are, uh, 2,039 tackles, 23 picks. That's the one that jumped out. 23 interceptions. They threw you the ball 23 times, London. I should have had more. My hands was just a little bit better. <laughs> I was going to say, how many hands catches? All body catches, right? Oh, no. I, 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 you know, I had I has, I, I did whatever I needed to do to catch the football. You know, if it, if it was a hands catch, I catch, I'll catch it. I actually picked off Kurt for a touchdown. Oh, I got Kurt for a pick six. Oh, <laughs> but he was uh, he was in uh, Arizona. I we we're playing our cover two. Uh, yeah. Greg, this is my first year in uh, I believe yeah, this is my first year in uh, in Washington. We go to our cover two and Kurt. Kurt throws a football pass. Was he, his receiver kind of misread the route, and I said, "Kurt, thank you. You threw a great ball." And I, <laughs> I, I, I took it back to the house, man. It's uh, it's one of my great memories. <laughs> wow! Did, did you go back and tell him? He, he he's well aware of it. <laughs> oh my dude, my dude, I love it. I love it. I love it. Nineteen forced fumbles, thirty nine sacks, four Pro Bowls. Should have been more. Sixteen seasons. Uh, never missed a game. That's look. If, if that's not Hall of Fame, I don't know what is, man. So this has been great, London, man. Thank you for coming on the show. All right, man. I enjoyed it. All right, that's a wrap on another episode of Rams Iconic. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. It was great. London Fletcher is unbelievable. Uh, Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you'd be so kind, go ahead and leave us a review. Let us know which Rams legend you'd like to hear from next. And there is still time to be among the first to experience SoFi Stadium. You've got to get in there. To purchase either season tickets or single game tickets, visit therams.com slash tickets. That's therams.com slash tickets. Thank you for listening. I'm DeMarco Farr, and we'll see you next time on Rams Iconic. Rams Iconic.